we'll stop that. And all right, we are recording and we are live streaming right now. Good afternoon or good evening. May I say good evening to everyone. We praise God for you all. Uh, we are starting our last session of our Kingdom Discipleship uh, Bible study. We're being taught by Minister Michelle Wally, and we are so grateful, so thankful, so honored to have the theologian here with us today. We are grateful. Amen. And she ha she's not here by herself, but she has the daughter Raquel, who will be uh, doing the slide for us. God bless you, uh, Raquel. I'm going to turn it over to you now. I'm going to give you as much time <laughs> as you need, because we already know how these Bible studies have gone thus far. So I want you to have all the time that you need, Minister Michelle. The floor is yours. God bless you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Can everybody hear me and see me tonight? Yes. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, Thank give you. thanks unto the Lord for yes. he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And his truth is through all generation from generation to generation. Is anybody thankful tonight for his mercy? Yes. Anybody yes. thankful yes. tonight for his grace? Yes. I wish I had a praying church in yes. here. This yes. is the last yes. night, you all. We gotta, <laughs> we really gotta give him some praise. Yeah. 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 Praise him in his name and, yes. and glorify his name because he alone, he alone is worthy of Great. all of our praise. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I greet you in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. He alone is worthy of all honor, glory, and praise. To my brother in the ministry, Pastor Mike and his lovely wife, Sister Sherry, who labor with me in gospel ministry, and to all of the ministers and teachers and leaders of the Gethsemane family, I say good evening to everybody. Of course, I, I would like to give special thanks to my daughter, Raquel, because she's really been with me throughout this entire month of July. So <laughs> I just, I thank God for her tonight. Now, a few housekeeping um, items. Now, as disciples of um, the most high God, we read scripture in community. We, that means that we are all participants. We are all participating in this Bible study. And, and, and we are sensitive to the move of the spirit. And so we leave room for the spirit. We listen and we collaborate with each other. In other words, we work together. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the fourth installment of a month-long series on the book of Acts. And I've truly been blessed um, by your presence and um, your commitment to um, going through these lessons with me tonight. And as Pastor Mike mentioned um, earlier, please feel free to, to engage the platform. I mean, um, the, you can use the chat, you can raise your hand. Um, we would love to hear your participation. The technology is there for us to use, amen? So let's start our discussion. Is that all right? Yeah. So we, when we approach the biblical text, as we've said before, we really have to talk about context, contextual, right? And so in other words, you all, we have to paint a picture. We have to paint a picture so that, so that we can better understand what is going on. Do you understand what I mean by that? I mean, we, we all know that the Bible is a very complex document. We've said that before. And when we approach it, we really have to sort of take off our 21st century eyes and put on our first century eyes. Now, when you go to the theater, of course, um, you don't have a blank, you don't, you don't have a blank stage, do we? We have a blank stage when we go to the theater. No, we have props, we have characters, we have all of these things that help us to understand the story that is being told, right? So I'm going to take off my 21st century eyes, which means I don't have a microwave, I don't have cable TV, I don't have the internet, 
but but I am in antiquity. I am in first century Palestine. Okay, are y'all with me? Yes. Now we've gone over quite a bit of material over the last three weeks. We've talked about the kingdom of God, and we've said that Jesus is repeatedly talking to us about the kingdom of God. And why does he talk about to, to us about the kingdom of God throughout all of the gospels, as well as his disciples talk about the kingdom of God? Now, Luke uses stories and characters in his two volume set. So Luke Acts is read in two volumes. It's Luke, the gospel of Luke, and it segues into the book of Acts. Now, remember what we said that the kingdom of God gives the believer, um, the disciple, an opportunity to join God in his work, right? Because God wants us to get involved. He wants us to participate in his work. And we also talked about the Great Commission and, and what that means to uh, the body of Christ. And we are supposed to what? Somebody? Somebody? What are we supposed to do? Minister Candace, can you tell us what we're supposed to do from the Great Commission? Go and teach. Go, yes, yes. My brother, go and teach and make, Minister Ken, disciples. Disciples. <laughs> disciples. disciples. <right? laughs> now, we also said that, that uh, the Great Commission almost uh, parallels the Lord's Prayer and it gives us specific instructions on what to do, right? To become kingdom disciples. And we also talked a lot about theology. And um, so, so what, Pastor Mike, do we mean by theology? What do, what do, what do we, we mean by theology? Theology is the study of God. The study of God. Um, so many ways to study. I won't get into that, but there's so many ways to study God. But the study of God. You use theos and you use this week in your definition. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And theology is a way also, in addition to what Pastor Mike said, theology is a way that we use words. We have these words to describe God and describe what God is like to other people because we are his witnesses. And, and so as his witnesses, we have to have correct doctrine. We have to know what we believe and believe what we know, right? Yeah. So we've studied some of those doctrines of the Christian faith. We've studied, we've talked a lot about doctrines. And so just to give a little framework for the book of Acts, Acts is very um, theocentric, meaning that God is the main character. God is the main character. And so um, we really have to focus our attention on what God is saying in the book of Luke Acts. We have to focus on what God is trying to teach us so that we can teach others. Are y'all with me on that? And as we said, Acts is, is a fulfillment of the Great Commission. Let's go to Acts chapter one, verse eight. Let's go to Acts chapter one, verse eight. And I just wanna show you some of the key verses that are in, uh, the book of Acts, because that's going to lay some groundwork for us as we study tonight. Acts chapter one, verse number eight. Does somebody have that? Acts one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. 
Okay. So that kind of lets us know that Acts is really broken up into three sections, broken up into three sections, because Acts one through seven talks about the teachings in Jerusalem. Acts eight through 12 talks about Judea and Samaria. Are y'all with me right now? Yeah. That's good. And then Acts 13 to 28 talks about the ends of the earth. Now, do you all see how that directly parallels with Acts chapter one, verse eight? Do you all see that in the text? Direct parallel with the teachings and what we should expect from the book of Acts. Amen? Amen. Let's go to Acts 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And I'm going to get... I have it. Okay, okay. And Acts 2, 47, 42 through 47. Go ahead, I'm sorry. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And so their possession and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. So do you see, do you see that sort of gives us a good picture of what the early church was like, right? We're talking about the early church, the beginning of the Christian movement. After Jesus has ascended into heaven, what does his church look like after he's gone, right? Of course, he's alive. We all know that he's alive and with us, but he has turned the ministry over to the disciples, okay? Now, Acts really traces the beginning of the growth of the New Testament church. It's, it's just starting out. And, and, and when we think about the church, we think of this big, big, lots of people. No, no, this was a very small sect. This is a very small sect. And so we're seeing the expansion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And really, I'm going to park right there because that's really what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be expanding the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now, we see in the text that many of the apostles were mentioned, but really the book of Acts talks to us about Peter and Paul, right? Peter and Paul are the main characters besides God. We see in Acts that Peter is really the key, the main character, and I'm saying this for a reason, you all are gonna see it later. Peter is the main character in chapters one through 12. Paul is the main character in chapters 13 through 28. Now, I'm highlighting main character for a reason. Okay, are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Now, really, the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles. But really, Raquel, it should be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. The Acts of the Holy Spirit. You can take me there. So let's get into our PowerPoint. Okay. Take me back, Raquel. One. The name of the discussion is 
kingdom disciples living and thriving in community. And um, that's a lot. That's saying a lot because really our community has been disrupted, has it not? It, our community has really been disrupted because of the COVID-19 virus. So it's important for us to try to keep community intact as much as we can, because we're in extenuating circumstances. I wish I had a witness here, right? We're in extenuating circumstances. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we still have to stay committed to community, right? We have to stay committed to discipleship. This, we don't, we don't, we can't stop. We have to keep going. We have to keep going. Give me that first slide. So when I was thinking about community, um, I'm reading this book uh, by Dr. King, uh, who was a systematic theologian. And he wrote this back in the 60s, back in the 1960s when we were going through a tumultuous time. And the three questions that he asked the Christian community, number one, where are we, right? Where are we? Number two, who are we, right? And number three, who should we become? So does anybody have anything to add to this? Um, where are we, who are we? Who should we become? Where are we right now in, in our kingdom discipleship? Anybody? Don't get caught on me now. <laughs> Don't get caught on, where are we? What, what, where do we find ourselves? Split. Okay. Okay. The Christian church is split right now. Okay. Okay. Or I should say divided. Okay. Expound on that, Minister Candace. When thinking about what's happening, well, I'm talking about Christianity in this country. Um, okay. Thinking about how we're divided between the evangelicals and the rest of us. Um, right. And right. how we are, uh, our ideologies or our, our beliefs are being applied in different different ways um mm -hmm. some ways mm -hmm. are you know the way that christ wants us to uh lead our lives and be examples to others and and some are leading by man's way man's okay. definition of how christ wants us to lead and um and to operate okay anybody else pastor mike you want to say anything about that? Um, that's 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 spot on, uh, Minister Candace. Um, the 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 body of Christ, mm -hmm. um, although it has many parts, the parts still are supposed to work together cohesively. Mm -hmm. the, the body should work in unity. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we look at the landscape, and, and we're talking in particular in America, when, right. we look at, when we look at the landscape of, of what we call Christianity, um, there's a difference between what we call Christianity and what true Christianity is. Okay. Christi Christianity can be summed up. And I'm not going to tell you this because I'm preaching this on, on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Christianity. Well, let me let me let me put it another way. Christianity can be summed up in. Uh, let me just say the summary of the Decalogue, and that we love God, and then mm -hmm. we love our neighbor as ourselves. That's true Christianity. That's okay. true Christianity. Christ Christ laid it out. Christ laid it out for us mm -hmm. uh, when when he said, um, "When have we?" When have you been hungry? 
this is the this is the question that the disciples asked. When, when, when were when were you hungry and we and we fed you? And he said, when you have done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. And so, as a society, mm -hmm. who um, we say we're a Christian society, but that can be debated. It probably should be debated. Right. Um, right. But when we talk about true Christianity, it's the unity and it's the spirit. And I'm so, so thankful we're talking about discipleship and we're talking about acts. Um, Cause you, yes, um, it's acts of the Holy ghost acts mm -hmm. of God. Uh, you can't split the two, but right. it's, it's the unity of the spirit, which keeps us as the body of Christ yes. bound together. Yes. We think, when we think of Christianity, we all should think of ourselves. This might strike some of you uh, in another way, but we should all think of ourselves as chained together. Yes. Chained without a lock. Walking yes. step by step. Mm -hmm. That's true Christianity. And isn't it interesting, you all, that 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 we can still ask ourselves the same questions that were that were being asked in the 1960s that's something to think about isn't it mm. go to the next one so what is community and this is just a simple definition that i pulled together go ahead raquel a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes interests and goals Christianity, Christian goals, Christian interests, right? A group of people who have a particular characteristic in common, right? We are followers of the teachings of Jesus, straight up, <laughs> you know, nothing watered down. Um, we really have to sort of stick to the simplicity of the teachings of Jesus. Of course, we can go deep, but really, we, we should be able to articulate who we are. Give me the next one. Now, what does the community provide? Just keep scaling that down, Raquel. So some of these are some of the things that, that, that community, I believe, provides. What do you think about this list? That's pretty easy. accurate, right? Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I like the challenge part too. Yeah. Yes. We're supposed to challenge each other. Mm -hmm. Give me the next one, Raquel. Now, let's go to Acts chapter two. I want to show you something in here. Acts chapter two, verses 16 to 21. Anybody have that? Acts 2. I have it. Okay. Uh, this is NIV version. No, this yep. is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the mm -hmm. last days, God says, I will pour my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. I love that scripture. <laughs> I love that scripture. But what I was really getting after here is that God is all about community, right? God is in community with himself. Did y'all catch that? God is in community with himself. Now, I heard someone say it this way. You cannot breach the Holy, the, the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity cannot be breached. Take me to the next one. Remember we said God is three persons. Mm -hmm. Each person is fully God. God is one God. 
So if we can just simply get simply get this down into our hearts, then then it's going to strengthen our faith so that we can say with conviction that we love that that we know God. Pastor Mike preached this on Sunday. Would he preach on Sunday? <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> He preached what? Um, Get to know him. Right? Yeah. Get to know him. Get to know him. Yeah. Get to know him. Right? So I really, really emphasize, I really want to emphasize the doctrine of the Trinity because remember, the Trinity cannot be breached. Give me the next one. Now, in the book of Luke, Acts, we talked about how the Holy Spirit is the main character. Remember I said, you cannot breach the, the Trinity. You cannot breach the twin, Trinity. So when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the triune God, right? Three in one. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. The Holy Spirit empowers, teaches, illuminates the text for us. We also said that the Holy Spirit sets the atmosphere and unifies us together, right? Like, like Pastor Mike just said, like the unbreakable chains, great analogy, right? But also the Holy Spirit purifies. Now, this is where it sometimes gets tough for, for some of us because sometimes the old man rises up, right? And if we are attentive to the Holy Spirit and we listen, like Pastor Mike said, he's not going to twist anybody's arm, right? He's going to say, hey, I don't want you saying that anymore. I don't want you doing that anymore. I don't want you come over here. Come, come, right? So, you know, he purifies us. He burns off the old man. Mm -hmm daily all right we said that this was not a one and done this is consistently burning off my old man like we are layers and layers and layers of stuff that needs to be burned off now i don't know about anybody else i'm talking i'm talking to myself right now these these are some things that need to be put away mm. so that we can do the work that God has asked us to do. Now, I thought that I was going to keep um, in step with the kings tonight. So I found this quote by, um, give me the name, Coretta Scott King. Coretta Scott King says, what, can somebody read that for me? The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate action of its members. Right. Oh, yes. I heard, um, I, I watch a lot of sports commentator. I'm the only girl in my family, so I watch a lot of sports. So, <laughs> um, and um, one of the sportscasters, Shannon Sharp, said that Bernice called him. Uh, Dr. and Mrs. King's daughter called him and said, hey, I really appreciate you talking about my dad, but really my mom was the heart and soul of that ministry. So here we see female disciples working and the disciples may not be working up front, right? They might be working as a supporting cast. I'm going somewhere with that, okay? I'm going somewhere with that. Take me to the next one. Now let's look at the Greco-Roman context. The Greco-Roman context. When we think about what that looked like, right? Emperor Augustus, first of all, let me back up and say that 
the Greco-Roman context was pagan. What do we mean by pagans? Reverend Mike, you want to help us out with that one? Pagan were uh, people that did not um, worship the God of Israel. So right. any other gods, they would uh, they would worship pagan mm -hmm. gods. Yeah, I mean, I've heard one theologian say that, you know, if you wanted somebody to fall in love with you, you, you call Diana. If you want, you got a cold, you call Isis, you, you know, so you're praying to these other gods. And let me just say that, that um, the emperor Augustus was Divithelius, meaning the son of God. So think about that when you think about the context of Christianity. You've got Christianity saying, oh, well, we're worshiping Jesus, the Messiah. And yeah, in the Roman context, people are saying, no, you're not. You're worshiping Augustus. <laughs> That's who we worship, right? Because it was controlled by the government, big metropolitan cities and very urban, right? Food, the arts, coliseums, you know, take me to the next one. And very brutal and very violent, right? They would have police militias come kill up anybody who, who wasn't in check, right? It was their responsibility to keep those people in check. Give me the next one. Now we're finally here to the examples of women disciples found in the acts of the Holy Spirit. That's what I wanna call it. So tonight we're gonna to talk about two disciples Tabitha and Lydia. So let's go right to the text. Minister Candace, can you read Acts 9, 36 to 41? I have it. Um, yep. 9, 36 through 41. 36 through 41. Okay. In Joppa. There was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydia was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in, was in Lydia, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All in the wait, all the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. You said the forty-one. Yes. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, "Tabitha, oh, no, to be." Yeah, you're right. You're right. Tabitha. I was right the first time. Or, okay, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to look at your Bible for this one because um, take me back, Raquel, a couple of slides. Take me back. Um, take me down one, sweetie. I want to go to, I just want to show those questions, Raquel. Um, okay. So here we have it, our exegetical work. In other words, we're going to look at the text and see what we can pull out of it. Are y'all with me? Okay. First question. What is the setting? To put on your thinking caps, caps. Well, she was in, in Joppa. Is that what you mean? Yes. There you go. Right. In Joppa. Right? Yes. What is, I'm going to skip over, I'm going to skip over these next two and I'm going to go to the main characters. 
the main character. Remember we said, who is the main character in X? God. God. God is the main character. <laughs> now, I, I want to go back. Raquel, take me back because I'm going to flip around a little bit tonight. I'll flip around. So stay with me. Okay. Let's take it from the top. So we know that we know that they were in Joppa. That's very evident right there. It, there are so many things that we can just pull out of the text because they're right in front of us, right? Mm -hmm. We also, I'm gonna make a point to say here that Tabitha is the only woman named as a disciple in the New Testament. So what that tells me, Reverend Mike, is that if they named her disciple, then she must have been in leadership because why else would you name her as a disciple? Um, I'm, 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 I'm saying that because that's the way I'm reading the text. Anybody else have any ideas about that? I mean, you know, she was a woman mm -hmm. and she was called a disciple in the first century. Right. And you and we can also see something here as well. We see that she's got two names. Why, why does she have two names? Mm -hmm. Because it's a Greco Roman society. Right. And Luke emphasizes the Greek because we believe that Luke was was Greek. So he's emphasizing that. Now we also see just in the first verse that we, we see what her ministry was. Okay. Somebody could say that she was a missionary. Somebody could say, you know, she was, she had the gift of helps, you know. So, so this is sort of how we go through the biblical text and glean information. Take me to the next one. So the story goes on to tell us that Tabitha got sick and died. Okay. Now, theologians use this analogy. It's sort of an underlying clue for us it says they washed her body and they laid it in an upstairs room now some theologians parallel this with the upper room experience okay so so you would have to know a little bit of bible <laughs> right mm -hmm. we study the bible but 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 the bible is one document it's God inspired and it fits together. So we see different uh, nuances. Um, give me the next one, Raquel. And then it gives us some geographical information. It tells us the city, you know, Lida near Joppa, okay? Details, clues, right? Mm -hmm. And then it brings in the characters. Now we already know the text is talking about Tabitha, right? Then we see the introduction of the disciples. And then we see the main character. Now there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here, but we can see how Peter is going to wind up being the main character of this text, even though the text is about Tabitha, mm -hmm. right? Even though the text is about Tabitha, Peter, the apostle is really the leading man. Now, some people might say, well, well, well why is Peter the leading man? Well, 
you know, Peter, Peter was the main character in the, in the gospel of Luke. And really, does it matter? I'm going to say this right here. If we're the main character of the story or the supporting cast, does it really matter? I don't know. Somebody can answer that if they want. Does it, does it matter if, 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 if I'm in the supporting role or if I'm the main character? Anybody want to answer that? Give me the next one. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because it's, uh, again, we are connected to the power source. Whether you're the yes. main or whether you in the background, we're all connected to, the, to, the, to that same power source, which is, which is God. So it may appear that somebody's up front. Hey. Maybe somebody's in the back, but it's really all God. Amen. We lean Amen. and trust and depend on God. Amen. That's what I was really trying to get after in this text, because we do see Peter as the main character. We do see Peter as the main character, but, but we also see a lot of other characters. And just like in our in our context, we might have somebody that is the main character um, or the main person, but, 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 you, but, but all of these things fit together, right? As Reverend Mike said. So even in this text, we see um, the widows, we see the men, you know, we see a lot of different characters, but all of the characters are summing up one story. Just like we are all characters in a big story, right? We're all in a big story. And it really doesn't matter who's got the lead because we are all an integral part of the body of Christ and the move of God. Give me the next one. And so we see finally that and I, I thought that this was very interesting. I'm doing a lot of talking here, so I want you guys to talk too. But we see here that Peter, I'm going to say, went into his prayer closet, right, alone. Put everybody out of the room, knelt down and prayed one of the spiritual disciplines, prayer. And then the miracle takes place, right? And then, give me the last one. Oh, take me back one. But, but the, the moral of the story, I think, is that other people saw the miracle and were blessed by that. Other people witnessed the move of God through these different characters. What do you all think about that? It says he called in all of God's people. Right? So that people could see what God was doing. Any questions on that? Anybody want to say something about that? Take me to the next one, account. I had my little magnifying glass out here. Take me to the next one. And so this is sort of what I got out of the text. What do you all think of this? We see main character, Holy Spirit, Peter and Dorcas or Tabitha. We see the supporting cast, the disciples, the widows, the two men and the believers. And this I thought was interesting, circumstances, right? Because I think that sometimes we shy away, Pastor Mike, from circumstances, right? But we know that these circumstances are going to occur. We, we, we know this stuff is gonna happen, right? But we also see that God was glorified because people got saved, right? And isn't that the goal of it all? So that people 
can see God at work. Take me fast. I'm running out of time. Let's go to Lydia. Any questions on <laughs> any questions on Tabitha? Did you all see what I was trying to get after there? Okay. That, that was good. That was good. She was a disciple. And the, 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 the scripture said that they sent the disciples sent two people to go get Peter. Yes. So they were using disciples. She was one of them. And she had to be special because Peter immediately got up. Yes. And went. So she wasn't just no anybody, no unheard of. That's yes. Why, that's why most people, most, especially women, most women in, in, the, in the Bible are not mentioned by name. But she had to be special. She had to be because they called her a disciple. I mean, she, like I said, she's the only named disciple in the New Testament. So that, that just lets you know that women were actively involved, actively involved, even though many times they were playing supporting cast. They were part of the supporting cast. Nevertheless, you know, I, I thought to myself today, well, you know, people get awards for being supporting actors, don't they? They get awards for that, right? Best supporting actor, right? Let's look at Lydia's story. Oh. Mr. Candace, I'm gonna get you to do it again. <laughs> Acts chapter 16. Okay, verse 11 and 12. That, that we're going to go down, I think, to 14. 11 to 14. Mm -hmm. okay. from, tra from Troas, mm -hmm. we put out to sea and sailed straight from straight for Samothrace. Okay. And the next day we went to Neapolis. Mm -hmm. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the, to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira, Th 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 sorry y'all. Thyatira, named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Keep going. Yes. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us into her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Drop down to verse number 40. 40. Forty says, after Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. Okay. Let's do our exercise again. Go back, Rika. But do you see that you can, when you when you're reading the scripture? come down when you're reading this go back <laughs> one more oh down Raquel I'm sorry <laughs> I'm looking for the text down okay here we are when we're reading the scripture we don't just sort of you know read it no we want to read it so that we can understand what's going on right so the first question I have about this text is who are we? <laughs> who are we? That's a question, isn't it? Because it really doesn't tell us. It does. It doesn't there, but it does. Right, <laughs> right, right. Go ahead, go ahead, Reverend Mike. <laughs> Where does it, where, right, go ahead, tell us what I'm So one I'm going could to. surmise, one could surmise, since it's Dr. Luke Wright, it's Luke, and of course it's going to be Paul and Silas, because you'll find out they're going to be in jail here in a minute. 
Right. <laughs> and might have been some others with him. But it, it's, it's important for us, and this is what I want to say here, is that you, you would have to read the entire selection. Like, we're, we're not plucking verses here and plucking, but no, we have to read it in its entirety. So if you went up further, you would know that Timothy's involved in that too, right? But, but that just sort of lets us know that you can't just take a piece of pericope or uh, a text and pull it out without having some type of context to it, right? Take me to the next verse, Raquel. So here we see we, the we passages, um, outside the city gate, finding a place of prayer. Now, I thought that was interesting too, because really in the book of Acts, which I never noticed before, prayer is a major, major theme in there. We've seen that twice already in both of these texts, that they were looking for a place to pray, right? So the story goes on to say that, you know, when you go to a new town, you talk to some people, right? And so they, they, they started talking to some women. There again, we see women, women involved. And then we, we find that they're talking to Lydia, who was a worshiper. They said that she was a worshiper, which is a big deal, I think. Um, and that she and her household were what? What were they? Baptized. They were baptized. Another, another of our sacrament, one of our sacraments there, right? Right? And so she said, if I'm a believer, come stay at my house, right? Come stay at my house hospitality, small church, right? Come on in. And she persuaded us. Give me the next one. Now, when we drop all the way down to verse 40, this is where we see the prison piece that Reverend Mike was talking about. But, but, but we also see here that take me back one Raquel, that, that Lydia was a homeowner back in the first century. Okay. She was also a business person, a dealer. Okay. And she was a believer and she had the ability to invite people into her house, which is a big deal, big deal at that time. I mean, like I said, we, we, we have to take off our 21st century eyes, put on our first century eyes because we see that these women, you know, they, they, they gave her a title here, a dealer of purple cloth, a big deal for first century. Let's, let's go because we're running out of time. <laughs> so this is sort of what I gleaned from, from this text, okay? the actions of the Holy Spirit, the setting Philippi, which Reverend Mike Pete preached on Sunday too, okay? See, you know, I'm trying, man, I'm trying. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were on a missionary trip, right? Um, people were baptized and believed, right? This is what we call ministry. We call ministry. Any questions? Any thoughts about that? So here's my relevant question, and I'm going to sort of segue out of that. How do disciples, I should have said, in the 21st century, how do we share the knowledge about God with our community? What, what does that look like? Anybody? How do we share the good news? 
conversation. Excellent. Um, excellent. 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 Absolutely. 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 Yes. Also, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Also, yes. I'm sorry. Also, there are a number of ways as far as uh, what we do at our church. There's a food drive. There's a way of communicating and fellowshipping with, your with the community in that way also. Amen. Yeah. Outreach. Mm -hmm. Outreach. Yep. That's a great one. And some of the same ways as, as, as um, the way Lydia and Tabitha did. So we, we're still doing the same things, maybe mm -hmm. in different ways. But yeah, but it's important that we do this. This is this is what we're called to do. We're called to share the good news. The model, the model. Uh, Minister Michelle is the same mm. as as the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, where, where does it start? He said you're going to start first <laughs> at home. Oh boy! It starts at home. Yes. Yes. And at home, it it spreads out. Mm -hmm. And it, and then it should spread out even further. And so our ministry has to start at home. And then it spreads out. I, I love how you put. I love how you put. How you how you uh, put it in Acts. Acts started first with Peter in those first twelve chapters, and we all know he was the apostle to the Jews. Yes. So it started from the Jewish community, and he spread further out to the Jewish community, and then. It picks up to Paul, and we know Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles, we say. Yes. Non-Jews. And so it spread further out. Go ye therefore and make disciples at home first, mm. then out. But mm. it has to start from within and then out. Mm. And I, I think that model is still, mm. that model mm. should not, I don't think that model should ever change. Right. That, that is the model. Hmm. I, I really, I, I received that. Yeah, that's, that's major. But, 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 but we have to even teach people how to do that. We have to teach people how to do it at home, you know, to just do discipleship at home. One thing that I wanted to bring to your attention um, before I get off track, because Reverend Mike threw me off track with that. <laughs> And that was good. <laughs> that was good. That was good. But there's a there's a term that we call kenosis um, in theology, and that is the emptying of Jesus's own will, right, and becoming receptive to God's divine will. Mm -hmm. And so, I thought that this is. Um, a good scripture to, to commit to memory. This hymn is a great scripture to commit to memory because it really does reiterate that we need to empty ourselves, right? And, 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 and push towards God's divine will. What, what God do you have me to do? What, what is it that you want me to do, right? Because here we are again, we have to make major adjustments to join God in his work. Give me the last one. And then I'm going to end with the Holy Spirit and, and what he does. Give me those things, three things. Stay connected. Share your story. Be a witness. And you know, invite others to be a part of the family of God. You know, that's, that's really what we should be doing, right? That's what we should be doing. Give me that last slide. And then this is, this is our focus. We're, we are to focus. Our focus should be on God. And that's all I have.
<laughs> that is all I have. Man, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Bible study, Vincent Shell. It is needed, and it is my prayer um, that as we publish this on our social media platforms, and I will be uh, saving it and putting it on YouTube also, it is my prayer that we could come back and revisit this and that others will see this and will know the importance of um, discipleship because God calls us all not only to be disciples, but to go and make disciples. That's our job. Yes. He only gave us one job, y'all. It's, it's simple. Make disciples. Yes. <laughs> Disciple somebody. And when we think about, when we think about um, even back in this time, even in Lydia's house, they were house mm -hmm. churches. Yes. They came together. They studied the word. They ate. They had fun. They it was it was a it was a unified gathering, y'all. And so we can do that now. We still can do that. Sure. Um, sure. You know, we can invite a family over to come and break bread together and break bread together. Bread being the word of God. We can do that. You know, mm -hmm. we can we can pile up in the in the in the car and go go to Sister Rita House and have her make some. Fried chicken. <laughs> I'm going to invite me to one of those. <laughs> I'll hold y'all to that. <laughs> we can do this, but it's important because it's needed. I think everybody in here will agree that it's, it's needed. It's needed um, for us. Our goal should be, I need to reach somebody. I need to, uh, I need to reach somebody. I need to invite somebody. Um, to come out and hear the word of God. That's not saying that we know it all. That's not saying that you have, see, this is where we have to understand. We don't have to know it all, but you do know what you know. That's right. Because you have experienced God in your own way. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't have a bunch of Candace Greens running around. It's only one. <laughs> it's only one. Right. Right. <laughs> God made her specifically right. as she right. is because she can reach who she needs to reach. Right. Right. That's why we are all different. Mm -hmm. we, all, we were born in a, my sister, my brother, we were all raised in the same house, but we are all different mm -hmm. because we are, we are to reach different people and different audiences. We all mm -hmm. have different experiences, even growing up in the same house, we have different experiences, mm -hmm. but we are to use that, that knowledge, that knowledge of God. Mm. I'm so glad. I'm so glad y'all listened to that, that sermon. Somebody preached, get to know him. <laughs> but that's what we have to do. And then not only get to know him, but share that knowledge that we have to somebody else as we have it, not as we heard, not as we, somebody else knows it, but as we know it intimately, right? That's what we share. And when we do that, when we share our experiences, it's, it's real and people know fake from real. And people want realness. They want realness. So when we can be real with people and, and we reach them by our own experiences. I've been through that. I know, I know God can see you out because I've been through it and he, he brought me out of it. It's powerful. It's a powerful witness of God's power. Um, and so I believe that's what God is going to do so again. Again, we say praise God. Thank you so much, Minister Thank Michelle. You. Thank um, you so much for inviting I me. Know, I know this was... Uh, <laughs> This was something that you had to do um, for class, but trust me, we benefited greatly from this. Oh, thank you. Um, I did too. <laughs> I enjoyed every bit of it. I really did. I look forward to it every week. Yes, we um, benefited greatly from this. And mm -hmm. so I thank you. Thank those who watched, came on. We had a couple come on live and we thank God for those who came on live. Thank God for all of you who have been uh, on every Bible study, showing your support. Um, for this Bible study. I think we are all blessed. Um, we have all been enriched by this Bible study. Thank you. I, I praise God praise and I praise Lord. God for your graduation that's coming up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm I um actually I, I wanted to say that I'm probably gonna use this um, for my thesis. 
Uh, Amen. The, That's uh, great. Yeah, the women in Luke X. So yeah, it's put, helped me out greatly. It's been That's great. Yes, it's been a great, great time. I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you all. Also, um, we have First Lady. We're going to ask First Lady to lead us, take us out in prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise Lady. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, everyone bow your head, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, oh God. Because God, this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. God, we ask that you create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us, oh God. Watch us that we'll be whiter than snow. God, we just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you, God. If we had 10,000 tons, we couldn't thank you enough. But we just thank you for this Bible study, God. And God, we just thank you for just... Um, and um, I'm going to say Pastor Michelle uh, <laughs> to uh, teach us um, your word and your way, God. God, it is so wonderful to um, just learn all about you, God. And God, that's all we want to do is just to show people your love, God, and just witness to them and God, show them that you are the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah. And God, we just love you so much and we just continue to bless and Glorify your name, and it's in your precious name that we say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you all so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Let me end the live. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>